How you doing, guys? Dark Lich. Uh, I'm going to show you a little quickie tutorial here. Um, but a lot of people ask me how I do the location-based blood. So first, let's show you what we got going on here. Okay. I'm in the first-person template, and the only thing I've basically done is I've done some modifications to the projectile, and I stole the player character from the content examples. But let's first show you what we're doing. If you look, I'm going to shoot the guy in the top of the head. Alright. Shoot him in the knee. Alright. Wherever I hit him. See it? The blood is going out where it's hit. Now, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to make the blood stick longer. Compile. Save. I will explain it. Don't worry. Alright, so now. I'm going to go over here and I'll shoot him up in the head. Okay. So wherever I'm hitting him, it's like a little blood jet. See it? So, let's see how we did that. Okay. First, I don't know if you know how to migrate or not. So let's save what we got. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to go into, if you go to open project, you can choose content examples. If you haven't already gotten it, get it from the launcher on the marketplace. So I'm going into content examples. And I'll show you the, the particles and stuff I copied and what I did to them. Okay. Once you're in here, you'll see that, uh, under the character is the hero TPP pawn with his accessories here. Um, you can, uh, let me migrate this over. Migrate, okay. Just click OK on the first window. All right, you're gonna browse to wherever your project is. Make sure you click content. So for me, it's blood effects tutorial content, click OK. So, what I did was, I went into uh, Open Level, Effects, it's example 1.5, so we run down the little hallway here. You highlight it, find it in the Content Browser, and bing, there it is. So now basically you're going to right click on it, choose Migrate, say OK the first one, scroll down to your project, make sure you're on the Content folder, click OK. For me, I gotta click yes to all because I've already done it. See, migration is successful. Okay, so we've got the parts we need. So now let's quickly go back over and show you what I did. So I'm going back under recent projects, blood effects tutorial. Jumping back in. Okay, so now we're back in here. Let's take a look at the projectile because I've made some changes. The stock first person template projectile starts off with a branch off of here under other comp and it checks to see if it's simulating physics. I've deleted that. I moved the add implo set location over, reconnected it to hit. So this stuff you'll have already from where it started. Then I took the hit location, okay. And I'm using that as its location for applying radial damage, just as a way I can find that I get the character. Okay. Under the other part, the character I happen to migrate over from the content, the, the black uh, third person pawn, is called player character. And because the character I'm using in a place called my character, I didn't mean to overlap. But if you're going to grab something that's named the same thing, you have to rename it in the other project first. Otherwise, it'll overlay it, all right? So basically what I did was I took the other, I cast it to player character, I dragged it out and chose launch character, and I'm launching it at negative 1,000 times the hit normal so that he bounces back after I shoot him. And then I apply radial damage from the hit location, 50 points of damage and a radius of 80. And I chose damage type uh, environmental. I dragged off of here and chose get player pawn for me, player zero. And instigated by controller, I dragged out and just chose get instigating or controller. 
All right, and make sure I connected both the failed to destroy actor, in case I didn't shoot player character, and through the chain, the success to destroy actor. This way the projectile disappears after it hits something. Otherwise you'll have a pile of them in your level. Click save. Okay, the other thing is under components, if you look closely, I scaled this sucker down because it was huge. So, uh, first thing I did was I took the sphere and I made it 0 0.025 uh, across all three sizes. I took the collision component and I changed the uh, sphere radius to 5. So it's smaller, so I get easier, uh, you know, locale on the projection. In the player character, I created two events. So let's look. Under the capsule component, I chose simulation generates hit events. Okay? and generate overlap events. Then I created those events. The easiest way to create them is go to uh, under events, make sure you got capsule component highlighted, and click add event. And if you look right here, uh, add on component hit. Right? You see right here? You can do it this way too. I just happen to right click and choose event hit. And then I cast it to my projectile so that only if he hits or gets hit by the projectile does he give a credit? Otherwise, he doesn't do anything. Uh, then, also on the character, I've also done something else, which is a little tricky here. Um, I've attached the blood fountain to him first. But how did I make the blood fountain? Let's see. The new folder we will have, because we migrated, under effects, under particles, is going to have GPU particles collision too. I created a copy, and in the copy, but I'll show you in the original. I went to Required, and I found that it's looking for a material called M Raindrop. I chose the Find in Content Browser, I closed the window, and there it is. I created a copy called Blood Drop, which is an exact copy of this, but I've made three minor changes. Let's go in and take a look. Here's the original. You see it? From the opacity and the colors, which go into emissive color, there's nothing there. On the one I did, let me close the window. I've gone and I've added a vector 3, I'm going to constant 3, which is hold down 3 and click the, the mouse, left mouse. I changed that to this burgundy red, so if we look closely you'll see. Burgundy red, clicked OK. Alright, then I dragged down from the multiply up here for the color, Lerp, linear interpolate, and created one. So I took the A from the original color, dragged it into in, in for here. I took the B to my uh, constant 3. I then multiplied that again by the result from both the LERP and my color. I took the opacity, which originally was plugged directly into opacity. I created another linear interpolate. I dragged my color into the B and the opacity into A. I took the result and I multiplied it by 5. And then I plugged into opacity again. This is what you'll get, which is a weird, shiny, funky red dot. Click Save. We're going to go back to the particle once it finishes compiling. Yours will probably be faster because I'm using the Substance Engine. Um, under Particles, I just created a copy. Right click, Create Copy. And I named it Blood Fountain. And then I went in under Required and I chose uh, that material called Blood Drop. And then I did some other changes, which is going to be Initial Size. I changed max under x to 1, y0, zero, z0, zero. min, 0.5, y0, zero, z0, zero. okay? Then under constant acceleration, I changed the acceleration to, it was originally uh, z minus 1000, I changed it to x100, y0, z minus 500, so it's got a little bit fall, slower fall. Um, under the particle uh, primitive cylinder, See particle, module, local, primitive cylinder. I changed the radius. See, this was all collapsed down. Start radius to 2. I think it was originally like 20 or 50. Yeah, it was 50. See, it's like huge. So I changed that to 2. See, now it's like a little string. Okay. And then um, initial velocity, I changed it to 10, 0, negative 50, and the min of 0, 0, 0. I clicked save. That's it. Now, go to your character, which for me is the, this chucklehead under the blueprints, player character. Now let's look at the com components where I've actually stuck this thing. Okay. See blood? 
It's not attached to any socket, but it's here. But I've hidden it. So we're going to turn it back on so you can see it. So basically I plunked it down here, and then I rotated it so it's coming out. You see it? Originally it was like this, which was straight down. So you pitch zero. I turned it so it's got a pitch of like, I think it was negative 50. Yeah, it was negative. I'm going to put it negative 40. You see it? So it kind of it trickles away from the body. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. And then I turned it back to hidden. See, on visible, I uncheck the visible, so it's hidden. Compile, save. Now, under the graph, I basically did, whenever I'm hit, see if it's my projectile by casting other. See, so drag it out. Drag it out. Cast to my projectile. Then I just took a regular uh, event and dragged it over, and I set the world location of the blood, which is this, the particle, to where the hit location is. Then I make it visible. I give it a delay of three seconds, which originally is 1.5. Okay. After that time, I turn it off. Now you could leave it going if you wish by just having nothing afterwards. Okay. Right now it would stay going forever. It's up to you. Okay. But either way, we have it here. Okay, so now let's see what it does when it's all together. Boom. A little nut shot. See, now he's making a little blood spurt for wherever he's hit. Now, you could turn off the collision component and make sure the guy has collision, but don't forget he'll fall through the world, so you'd have to make the collision on the guy. And then you check for collision hits on the guy, not the capsule, but it's up to you. Now you could also look for a location of a bone if you're hitting the mesh and not the capsule. So there's different ways you can do it. But right now, I'm just basically getting the basic hit and sticking it on there just so it looks good. All right. Well, there you go. I hope uh, you guys have some fun with this.